what's up it's Kathy and I'm back with another process video and this one is just going to be using up a whole bunch of kind of older products I kind of want to go with like a vintage style for this one but I want to do it on a crisp white background because that's just really something I a style that I really like doing and I'm picking a whole bunch of papers that are actually in my stash uh, I don't think I use any whole papers except I might I can't remember um, except for the white one and that is like a wood grain textured paper it's very stark white and it was from paper issues and I think you can get them in a five pack and they're really cute uh, just to have that extra texture but it is a really stark white so I, I don't use it often I only use it sometimes so I'm just kind of cutting apart papers to see what I want to mix and match I don't end up using that ampersand paper um, which is from the documentary uh, documentary uh, <laughs> a documentary ha huh, collection um, that was from um dear lizzie a little while back the blue floral is i think a die cuts with a view paper vintage collector it's older and the yellow and pink one with a scallop is uh, from the wonder collection i apologize if you can hear that slamming my daughter likes to kick the wall when she's supposed to be sleeping and we share a wall and i've mentioned that before and it's really loud and everybody's kind of making a bunch of noise anyway um i thought about bringing in the deer paper because well you know she's in a deer sweat sweatshirt and the whole thing was <laughs> that uh, we were apple picking and I wanted to take some pictures of her and these were the only ones that I could get was her pretending to be a deer because I don't know she just when I ask for pictures from her uh, I never know what I'm gonna end up because I never know what she's gonna do sometimes she just makes like frowny faces and sometimes she poses really weird so I kind of have to just take what I can get uh, the pink paper that you see there is basic gray the butterfly is my mind's eye these are all several years old or more the doily is from pretty little studio and i'm going to take a really long time figuring out exactly how i want to lay these all out but i eventually do and i glued them all together um, with the doily kind of inside but not really and then i had to do this thing where i cut a strip off of the white paper and then taped the polka dot paper behind it and just made sure that it was the same uh, width so at first I don't know why but this this whole idea perplexed me like I know sometimes we do strips of paper going around over the top of our layouts but they go over over the main paper but this one I wanted to go underneath and I wanted to cut the paper smaller and for some reason that like yeah as I said it perplexed me forever I was like how do you do that like I don't know why I couldn't get it I, I guess I was just having one of those days anyway <laughs> I eventually figured out how to do it and then I wanted to roll it down and have something peeking out and it didn't roll all that well because of course there's two different papers there and they're both very thick papers so it didn't roll nicely uh, as you can see so I just ended up uh, stapling them so that they would stay put after that um, you could really try to make the roll look nice and cute but I just gave up uh, I realized that I wanted that I thought the that paper there from the wonder collection would work the best to to be seen through and some of that was because there's so much blue already going on and the other part was that there was just more it wasn't uh, it was further away I guess from that cut at the top so I thought it would work better like basically if I would put the blue one it'd be they'd be almost touching they're so close the the blue florals so that didn't seem to to make any sense uh, I split up the butterfly paper and put some on each side and then I happen to see that top that corrugated piece and that's just the top part uh, the the top branding strip from that uh, yellow and pink paper uh, if you're wondering why I'm getting frustrated it's just her continuing to kick the the wall it's just getting to me um, 
I originally thought about putting a kind of little cluster down there at the bottom and I like this idea and I do switch it and make it go on the other side eventually. I'm not sure what possessed me to put it on the other side, but I don't know. Some part of me decided I needed to. Um, and I, I didn't even really need this other cluster. I could have gotten away without it. Um, it, it definitely busies up the layout. Um, and I'll show you what I mean kind of at the end because I had um, the, the font that I end up using is also from the older Wonder Collection and uh, it's quite big so it ends up taking up quite a bit of space. Between that and the, the clusters that I make, uh, this ends up being quite a busy page when I actually wanted it to be somewhat minimal and it just, I just never end up with it being minimal. I'm adding in staples just for the look and also to kind of hold some of it in place uh, just to have a little bit of extra. I think I, I think primarily I just wanted more polka dots on the paper. I just, I'm using every last scrap of that paper from Maggie Holmes Gather, I believe. And it had beautiful florals on one side and then that black, that polka dot on the other. And I'm just... I've always been obsessed with that tiny little polka dot. So I'm going through my ephemera packs and I have a whole bunch of like the gather collection and I think the open book collection maybe in, in that package or the confetti, like it's just a whole bunch of Maggie Holmes and some dear Lizzie and stuff all kind of combined together in one pack that uh, all looks similar. So I'm just going through it and just grabbing whatever. And I start grabbing a lot of the vellum that's older from older Maggie Holmes. And some of it is just that I really want to use it up. And some of it is just that I actually think it would look nice. Uh, especially there's a few little pieces that are kind of green. Uh, so I kind of want to bring that in. And then I decided for some reason I just had to bring in another transparency. This is kind of something I'm doing a lot lately is getting those older transparencies that were really popular in just because it's another layer, but then there's color and different things like that that go along with it. So I decided to pick that pink, pinkish one. And I think it was just to bring in more pink. And the only reason I wanted more pink is she's wearing a shirt underneath that is very kind of fuchsia and I don't know I just decided I wanted to go with that color so I can't decide where I want to put the top part of this but I do want to put the top part on so I'm going to tuck it in underneath some of the layers and then tuck more layers back in around it so I like having that corrugated piece up there on the top it just kind of makes a nice heavy top I guess to it uh, that little piece there that was vellum says my darling on it and it's got like a green floral kind of pattern all around it and it worked really perfectly. I also have those cute little green darts and well there's just one dart that's green and the other dart is pink and so I decided to use them so I could bring in some green down at the bottom cluster. And then there's that jackalope thing because it definitely looks like a rabbit but with uh, antlers which is a jackalope. So, uh, I'm calling it a jackalope and, uh, I do bring that one in at the end. I'm just kind of going through another ephemera pack and this has a bunch of the wonder collection cut aparts that were like from the 12 by 12 sheet and then the ephemera pack. So I decided to just staple down some of it and I cut out that little hello and I'm just putting it up there as another little wood grain. I don't want this to be a super feminine you know it all has to be florals it can't be I want there to be some whimsy to it as well and I have even more little vellum pieces and I'm uh stapling them on top of the little photos and so you can kind of see them but kind of not see them and there's they're yellow so that works out well I decided to put that love in the bottom and then I realized I want even more of that uh yellow and pink pattern paper so 
I put some in there and then I tear off another piece so that it looks like it continues all along the back of the love ephemera. See? <laughs> so that worked out really well. Um, I got that in there and I really like it. And I couldn't decide because that one said love and then that was a square piece that said wild heart, which would work really well. Um, but it, it just, it was really big and square and it was just kind of in the way for the most part. And I knew I wanted to use that little deer. I just couldn't figure out where. And I actually thought I really, I really like it there in the middle as opposed to it being part of one of the other clusters, which it could have totally been, but I love that little deer there. So I'm just gonna, this is gonna be a really tiny cluster. As you can see, I'm not going crazy big with it. Uh, there's the dart and the little love and then I put the jackalope over it and then that's like it and just kind of see it just fit perfectly around the around the uh, circle so I thought it looked really cute I think that's pretty much it for the decorating uh, oh yeah of course heaven forbid I do a whole layout and not put some kind of fabric on it so I have this trim that I bought at Michael's and I'm just gonna have it peeking out the bottom. And this was just kind of to add in a little bit more of that aqua blue that uh, you can see in different parts, um, just to counteract all the pink and all the yellow that's going on. And I'm just gonna hold that and let it dry. Um, I just used my fine liner to, to kind of squirt some underneath it. And uh, to prevent fraying, I stapled the edge uh, that I had to cut because it just immediately started fraying because it's technically like a trim for fabric. So these are the letters I was talking about. Uh, they are really big. They are multi-patterned. So first I had to decide what I don't want, what I wanted to write. And then I had to decide, um, which colors I wanted to use. I obviously wanted to use the word deer, but the, d-e-a-r like oh my dear but she's a deer <laughs> um so i just had to decide which ones i wanted to use uh, that way and the m's and the w's are the exact same letters just flipped over so i end up using a w uh, for the m instead of and i kind of wish i had wrote uh oh my dear like i did there uh, I thought it was just too big, I guess. There was just too much going on. So I move it and at the end of deer, I put an exclamation mark. So it still works. I just kind of think it would have looked cute with oh my dear going across it. Um, I don't journal on this one because you could not journal right on top of this uh, paper. There's just too much texture, but I know I'm gonna journal on the right hand uh, between the photo area and the bottom cluster area. I think it'll look really cute in there. So I'm gonna finish it off with Heidi Swap Color Shine and I thought I was grabbing my Primrose, which is a nice pink, but I accidentally grabbed my Cherry, uh, which is more of a red, but it still worked out really well because it's it's not a like a red red and I absorbed some of it to lighten it up. So it still ended up working quite well anyway. But yeah, until I start dripping it out, I'm like, oh, that, that doesn't look like the right color. I'm like, it is not the right color, but it'll work. And I think it looks really cute. So yeah, uh, pictures are coming up and I will see you in the next video. So have an awesome day. Bye. Mm -hmm.